in prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let's see if it works tonight. Almighty God, grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning and your truth at the close of the day. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sin I know the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed, but some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me that I may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are united with Jesus Christ in whom we are forgiven, and I declare that forgiveness to you this night in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We rest now in the peace of Christ and rise in the morning to serve. Do not worry saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear? Indeed, your heavenly father knows that you need all these things, but strive first for the dominion and the righteousness of God and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow. Matthew 6, 31 through 34. And for our song tonight, um, I am going to pick, if I can get it up here, it's a short one. Our devotion tonight from our restless soul we have um, a piece from Nowen called a divine place it's from his book gracias but it's in English don't worry when I met mother Teresa in Rome I saw immediately that her inner attention was focused constantly on Jesus it seemed that she only saw him and through him came to see the poorest of the poor to whom she has dedicated her life. She never answers the many psychological or socioeconomic questions brought to her on the level they are raised. She answers them with a logic, from a perspective, and in a place that remains unfamiliar to most of us. It is a divine logic, a divine perspective, a divine place, that is why many find her simplistic, naive, and out of touch with the real problems. Like Jesus himself, she challenges her listeners to move with her to that place from where things can be seen as God sees them. When, she ex I, when I explain to her all my problems and struggles with elaborate details and ask for her insights, she simply said, if you spend one hour a day in contemplative prayer, and never do anything which you know is wrong, you will be all right. With these words, she answered none as well as all of my problems at the same time. It was not now up to me to be willing to move to a place where that answer could be heard. 
the divine place. Oh. How much time do you spend in prayer a day? Or a week, or in a month, or in a year? When do you tend to go? Um, when do you tend to pray? Is it when things are all falling apart and it's the last thing you can do? Is it um, on Sundays when we worship or in these times of devotion that are becoming now part of our daily rhythms, maybe in a new way, for me in a new way? Um, why do we pray? A lot of it is to name our need and have that conversation with God, um, to remind ourselves that God is part of everything that's happening in our lives and that God has overcome the world, to, as, to be in relationship with God. Part of it is to cry out to a loving Father, um, uh, a divine Savior who has been where we've been in our flesh and blood and problems. I mean, his, his relationships with his disciples weren't exactly without complication, right? And with the crowds he, he met, even with his hometown, um, think of all the problems that Jesus went through. So Jesus understands in many ways what, when we struggle. I haven't read a lot about Mother Teresa, but of course, um, know her story about her work in Calcutta with the uh, untouchables and um, other just pouring out of her life in service. The simplicity of that, of being present, of listening, of caring, of dedicating your life to those who many people don't even bother to see. And it's interesting when, when you think about when, when, when Nawan talks here at the end about sharing with her all of his problems uh, and struggles with elaborate details and ask for her insight. I, I think of times in my life when things have been hard and, and when I've reached out to friends, counselors, pastors, um, shared with my husband, etc. cetera, um, how you like get all the details. And so it's almost like you're stating a case, like I'm going to trial and I'm going to prove that this really is hard, that this really is a challenge. And these are all the, the things that, that give that reason, either why I'm being harmed, why I'm being unjustly um, accused, why I'm being, um, why I'm struggling why my body's falling apart in different ways um, because of this injury, that injury, the other injury. Um, we just are really good at the details. At least I am. I don't know if you are, but I am I'm good at that. And part of it is to kind of state my case or give justification for why I'm suffering. Um, and may, maybe there is a place, and I think there is a place for doing that as we work through. But what it also comes to me is it ends up being that I play through and how do I, how could I have done it better? How could I have I done something different? And either I become very self-focused and try to pick apart every action um, and try to replay the different ways it could have gone or, or how the relationship or situation kind of unraveled. But there's a point of learning and there's a point of just nitpicking and not being productive anymore. And that um, it almost prolongs or like picks the scab or just doesn't allow healing to happen. Where that time is, is um, different perhaps for all the different situations we're in. But the, the simple answer, you know, all, you know, somebody pours out their life at you and everything that's going on in their life, or you've just like vomited everything that's happening <laughs> in your life at somebody um, because you're struggling, because you're hurting, because you're restless. And as she says, you know, prayer, don't do what's wrong, and you'll be all right. <laughs> you know, she's not wrong, um, but also she, she's not wrong. I'm already trying to justify it, right? I will say that life's messy, and I think part of that being all right is... Um, knowing that we're not alone as we go through it, being reminded through prayer, 
through hearing God's word that God does have a word for the situations we're coming from. And it's not, as we, we studied in Job, necessarily to give us the answers or to answer the why, but to just hear and be present and um, see us through. And when we fall on our face to pick us up, when we try to, um, when we lack humility and try to be prideful to kind of bring us back in line. Um, there is a divine logic and a divine perspective of the grandness of all of creation and the, the commonality of human suffering, that we're not alone. And it's not about comparing suffering. It's about that it's part of life. And it's not just going to go away. Um, a lot of, I know people who had a hard 2019 were like, I was really hoping for 2020 to be better. <laughs> and we do, we look for that future point of being easier. The divine logic is even in the midst of suffering, there's hope and there's joy and there's God's presence. And so there's enough to see us through the next step, um, even when we don't even know where that's going to go. So reflect tonight about that simplicity, sometimes the simple answer, um, listening to the details and just saying, you know, find that time of peace and quiet and connection with God. And if you've been anxious, if you've been overwhelmed, have you taken the time to slow down, to be present with God, to listen? to what God might be saying in your life, I do guarantee you that it will make a difference. And I also guarantee you, even as a pastor, sometimes it's hard to slow down and listen and breathe and just be in God's presence. But whenever I do take that time, I never regret it. And I always feel restored. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Hear my prayer, O Lord, listen to my cry. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. In righteousness, I shall see you. When I awake, your presence will give me joy. Be present, merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of life may find our rest in you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now in peace I will lie down and sleep. You alone, O oh God, make me secure. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.